Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Grounded in Galveston. Uh-huh. One way to describe Jell-O, ladies and gentlemen, would be to say it's a dessert that makes everybody sit up and take seconds. Because Jell-O is a grand, tempting treat that always looks and tastes like more. The clear, glowing colors of Jell-O carry a rich invitation, a promise of rare delight. And it's a promise that's always fulfilled by Jell-O's swell, refreshing flavor. We're sure you'll like Jell-O, sure that once you try it, you'll want to enjoy it again and again. So start serving Jell-O real soon. Ask your grocer for several packages, choosing any or all of Jell-O's six delicious flavors, Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. By the way, strawberry and raspberry jello both have a new improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And the result is a rich, unique goodness that's better than ever. Serve jello tomorrow, friends, and discover for yourself why jello is America's favorite gelatin dessert. in Galveston, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to bring you... Hold it! Hold it, Don. Jack isn't here. I saw him just a few minutes ago. Where is he? He just went in the other room to talk to his riders. Oh, boy, is Jack burned up. Well, them two guys get away with murder. They never have a program writ till the last minute. (laughs) Well, I'm going in and see what's happening. Gee, he's always having trouble with his riders. Now, look, fellas... If I told you once, I told you five times. You gotta have the program written before we go on the air. Every week we just barely make it. Now today, look what happens. No script at all. Well, what are you worried about? Yeah, it's only Saturday. (laughs) It's not Saturday, it's Sunday. And there's no excuse for you guys not knowing it. I gave both of you calendars for Christmas. (laughs) I knew this would happen someday. But we were stuck this week. We didn't have no inspiration. (laughs) Oh, you didn't? Mother said there'd be weeks like this. Uh, Well, tell your mother that I'm paying you to work. You're working for me. That's another thing. We want more money. (laughs) Well, you certainly picked the right time to ask me. You're getting plenty now. Why do you want more money? We want to get a room tonight. Now, cut that out. Fine team of writers I've got. I've been looking for you all week. Where were you? Palm Springs. You're not supposed to be in Palm Springs. You're supposed to be here with me. Come on, Jack. We're waiting for you. Be there in a minute. Now, look, fellas. Hey, who's the dame? That's Mary Livingston. She's on the program. You've met her at least 400 times. Oh, yeah. That's the girl we write for, Eddie. You're Eddie. I'm Bill. (laughs) And I'm Jack Benny, glad to know you. Now listen, fellas. Jack, you better hurry up. Let those two dreamboats alone. I told you, Mary, I'll be there in a minute. Okay. And stop whistling at them. Now look. Look, fellas, we're on the air, so I'm going out and do the best I can. Meanwhile, you stay right here and prepare some kind of a play for us. Okay. Say, how about a murder mystery? A murder mystery? You know, where a guy comes home and finds his wife in the arms of another man. Door opens. Now I got you. Why, Julius, what are you doing here? You know what I'm doing here. I didn't go to Scranton at all. Julius, Julius, put down that gun. Oh, no. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. Ride it up. (laughs) Ride it up. Ride up anything. (laughs) Look at, fellas, ride anything just so we can have a program. Now bring it in as soon as possible. Okay, give me the pencil, Eddie. You got it, Bill. I gave it to you yesterday. Oh, no, I gave it back to you. Yeah, but after that, I... Here, use my pencil. (laughs) For heaven's sake, get started. Now go to work. 
Darn those guys. They go to Palm Springs, and I have no broadcast. What's the matter, Jack? You having trouble with your writers again? Yeah, Don. Every week, they're getting lazier. And now tonight, no material at all. Well, why don't you fire him, Jack? They can't. He dug up a photograph of Jack when he was in third grade. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? He was the only kid with a handlebar mustache. <laughs> Oh, it was just fuzz. You could hardly see it. <laughs> anyway, that picture has nothing to do with my writers. If this ever happens again, I will fire them. What are you worrying about, Jackson? If you ever get stuck for material, I'll be glad to let you have my author. Your author? Yeah, the guy that writes all that funny stuff for me at the Wilshire Bowl. Oh, fine. Phil, you're always bragging about your writer. I've been to the bowl a thousand times, and I've never seen him. Who do you think parks your car? <laughs> Oh, so that's your gag man. Well, the next time he points at my Maxwell and says, didn't I see that in the Grapes of Wrath, I'm going to run right over it. <laughs> Say, Dennis. Yes, please? Hmm. There's one guy doesn't have to worry about material. Script or no script, he comes through with his yes, please. Well, Dennis, as long as we're stuck here, how about having your song right away? Why don't you and I ad lib a little, to and fro? <laughs> To and fro, eh? All right, Dennis, I'll start it. Who was that lady I seen you walking down the street with? Yeah, seen. That's some ad living. I think you better sing, Dennis. At least it'll be better than having... Come in. Special delivery for Mary Livingston. Uh, right here, boy. Give him a tip, Jack. Here you are, buddy. Say, you're rather old for a messenger boy, aren't you? You're a little late for Betty Grable yourself, bub. <laughs> I had to give him a 50 cent tip You gave him a dime I gave him a quarter I know what I gave him <laughs> Who's the letter from, Mary? It's from my mother in Plainfield <laughs> Well, this is one time I'm glad to hear from the old lady <laughs> Yes, sir What you got to say, Mary? Listen to this <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary Just a few lines to say hello And thank you for the small check You sent me for Christmas it looked like a refund from the gas company. Boy, is she mercenary. Uh, by the way, Mary, we have a new address now. We had to move from the old house on Elm Street, as the landlord is not nuts about your sister anymore. I thought your sister was all set to marry the landlord. Yeah, she was a chump to put on that bathing suit. Well, she should have thought of that. Uh, we had quite a time moving the furniture. Your brother Hillard tied the piano to your grandfather to keep it from bouncing off the truck. But it bounced off anyway. That was a brilliant idea. You should have seen your grandfather. He looked just like a toothpaste ad with those white teeth sticking out of his mouth. More things happen with your family. Uh, your father likes the new house much better than the old one, as it has swinging doors. Oh, my goodness, they moved into a saloon. And Mary, I must tell you about New Year's Eve. The whole family went to Mary, the... we've had enough of that letter. How about a song, Dennis? Okay. The whole family went to the midnight show of Jack's new picture. Mary, we've had enough of... Oh, hold it, Dennis. <laughs> uh, what was that, Mary? Uh, the whole family went to the midnight show of Jack's new picture, Love Thy Neighbor. Well... We weren't in the theater ten minutes when your Uncle Lou was thrown out for taking the title seriously. <laughs> He's just the type. And no more news, so we'll close with love to all from your mother, Sugarfoot Livingston. Mm, Sugarfoot. I wish she had a program so I could write her a letter. Let's have your song, Dennis. I'm going out and see how my writers are coming along. If they're stalling... Yes, 
does not harm you here alone That one me, oh no Was the truth in her eye ever dawning That made me love Mary The rose of Trelly Of evening their mantle were spreading, and Mary, all smiling, was listening to me. The moon through the valley her pale rays were shedding when I won my heart above. Lovely and fair as a rose of a summer, yet was not our beauty alone that won me. Oh no, was the truth in her eye ever dawning that made me love me? Sure, fellas, I know it's a good title for a murder mystery, but where's the play? Well, we got a lot of good ideas, but we can't write them down. <laughs> Why not? I gave you a pencil. Yeah, but there ain't no lead in it, see? <laughs> oh, there ain't no lead in it. Give me that pencil. Look, fellas, you turn this little knob here and out comes the lead. It's an automatic pencil. Oh, yeah. Look, Bill, you turn this knob and the lead comes out. Say, that's good. Let me turn no, it. No, I want to turn it. Come on, just one. I've turned it already. <laughs> All you gotta do is put the pencil on a piece of paper and push it a little. Now, please write that mystery play, will you, fellas? Okay. Boy, if I ever get my hands on that picture, I'll fire them so fast they won't know what hit them. Well, Don, it'll be a few more minutes yet. Yeah, what'll we do? I don't know what to talk about. Me neither. Gee, there must be something we can mule over. Mule? <laughs> now, bet $10 he means mull. No, mule! Let's kick some dialogue around. <laughs> Say, that turned out to be a Lulu. Oh, that was brilliant. There you are, Jackson. Why don't you hire me for a writer? Because I hired you once for a band leader, got gypped, and I'm disillusioned. <laughs> no, I guess we'll just have to stall around till my boys get that play written. Gee, if this was television, you could take your teeth out and make like Popeye. <laughs> That's very funny. Remember when you dropped him at the hockey game in New York and the Rangers made a goal with him? <laughs> Mary, that wasn't my teeth. That was my cigarette case. Well, it sure snaps open. All right, there's no use trying to keep this up. I'm going to see if my writers have got any... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, I can't talk to you now. Well, it's very important, boss. It's about Mr. Billingsley, our boarder. Billingsley? What about him? Well, I've been telling you for months to get rid of him. He's getting crazier every day. Oh, he's just a little odd, that's all. I don't even call the wagon. <laughs> oh, you just don't like him. What's he done now? Well, you know that mechanical man he was building? Mechanical man? Oh, you mean that robot? Yeah, remember you said it would never be practical? Uh-huh. Well, that ain't your cousin Boo-Boo walking around the kitchen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's the robot doing in the kitchen? He's trying on the frying pan. I think he wants a new hat. <laughs> now, Rochester, this is no time for joking. I don't want that big mechanical thing roaming around my house. Aren't there any buttons to control it? Yeah, there's three of them. When you press the first one, it knocks you down. Uh-huh. And 
when you press the second one, he picks you up. I see. What happens when you press the third button? He goes, whoo! <laughs> What? And he slaps you down again. <laughs> well, watch out. That thing is dangerous. If he comes near me again, I'm going to take a sledgehammer and beat the batteries out of him. <laughs> well, there must be some way to shut it off. Now, look, Rochester, I'll be home right after the broadcast. In the meantime, don't go near the kitchen. I'm calling from San Diego. <laughs> Well, you get right back and I'll wait up for you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gee, I never thought that mechanical man would work. Well, I guess I'll have to raise Mr. Billingsley's rent. He's got a roommate now. <laughs> now, play something, Phil. I'm going in and beat the gags out of my rider. <laughs> Look at this page The word is murderer Not moiterer Well, a gangster Would say moiterer I'm not a gangster I'm a police captain Read your own script Now, fellas It's time for our play So I'll take what you've got And bring the rest in As soon as you can Give me those pages Please give me those pages All right Please give me those pages <laughs> Now Concentrate, will you, Bill and Ed? Gee whiz, kid. Fine thing. Drama on the installment plan. Well, how does it look, Jack? Are we going to do a play tonight? Yes, but we'll have to do it without a rehearsal. Here are your parts, kids. Now, let's see. I'm going to be Captain O'Benny of police headquarters, and Dennis, you'll be my assistant, Sergeant O'Day. Oh, thanks. Oh, welcome. <laughs> now, Mary, you're going to be the widow, Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith. The widow? Yes, your husband has been killed, leaving you $3 million, an estate on Long Island, and a yacht. And you're all broken up. Why? Does the yacht leak? No, you loved your husband. Oh. Now, let's see. Phil, you'll be the family physician, and Don, you're going to be the bugler. Bugler? Oh, they must mean butler. <laughs> You're the butler, Don. Well, so much for casting. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the feature attraction this evening, the Benny, when we act, you better act like you enjoy it, players, <laughs> will present an original mystery drama entitled The Murder of Malcolm Smith, or Although He Wasn't Drafted, He Was Drilled. <laughs> Say, that's not a bad title. I think I'll get the boys a room tonight. <laughs> Well, let's go, fellas. The opening scene is the office of Detective Captain O'Benny at police headquarters. Curtain. Music. Hey, Sergeant O'Day. Yes, cop? That's cap. <laughs> Did 
Did you answer the burglar alarm at the Acme Lumber Company? Yes, sir. Well, were there any suspicious characters around? No, the furniture movers told me they hadn't seen anybody. Furniture movers? <laughs> yeah, two fellas with a safe. Those were the burglars. <laughs> What's the matter with you, anyway? I'll take it. Hello, police headquarters. Hello, this is Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith talking. Yes? My husband, J. Malcolm Smith, wealthy star stockbroker of New York, Palm Beach, and Miami, heir to the millions left by his father, has been killed. That's shocking news, Mrs. Smith. Are you sure your husband is dead? Definitely. <laughs> we'll be there in five minutes. Goodbye. What's up, Chief? Wait till I hang up. <laughs> J. Malcolm Smith, the stockbroker, has been murdered. What's the J for? Jazzbo. He sold neckties on the side. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. This is an important case, Sergeant O'Day, and we're going to find the murderer of J. Malcolm Smith or... or... Or what? Or nothing. We're all out of script. <laughs> hey, fellas, hurry up with the rest of this, will you? Play something, Phil. <laughs> Fine writers. They couldn't even finish the sentence. Hold it, Phil. There's a few more pages, Jack. Thanks. Now go back and get to work. We got a union. We're going out to eat. <laughs> Not until you finish the script. Okay, blue eyes. <laughs> even my writers notice them. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yes. This is an important case, Sergeant O'Day, and we're going to find the murderer of J. Malcolm Smith or my name ain't Captain O'Benny. Heck, I could have thought of that myself. <laughs> Let's go! Come on! Come on, open the door! This is the police! Open up, or we'll break it down! Yeah, down! Come on, O'Day, let's crash it! There goes my cigarette case. <laughs> Here it is. Good evening, gentlemen. Did you ring? I'm Captain O'Benny of police headquarters. We're here to investigate the murder of J. Malcolm Smith. Yeah, J. Quiet, you. <laughs> Where's Mrs. Smith? She's in the library. This way, sir. Come along, O'Day. You stick with me and make notes. How do you get the lead out of this pencil? Look, you turn this little knob and out comes the lead. You're as bad as Sambo and Tambo. Here we are. Pardon me, are you Mrs. J. Malcolm Smith? Yes, Captain. Tell me what you know about the murder of your husband. Well, we were sitting here in the library listening to the radio when all of a sudden I turned around and there was my husband on the floor with five bullet holes in him. Did you hear any shots? Not one. Oh, come now. You're listening to the radio with your husband. Five gunshots ring out, and you don't hear them. How do you explain that? Phil Harris's band was broadcasting. <laughs> Make a note of that, O'Day. Oh, cop, K. Oh, cap, cop. Okay, Coop. That's okay, cap. There's nothing to it. Now, Mrs. Smith, I want the truth. You really hated your husband, didn't you? You hated him. No, no, I loved him. I loved him, I tell you, loved him. Then why aren't you crying? The doctor told me to cut out salt. <laughs> you can't fool me, Mrs. Smith. You killed your husband and I know why. You murdered your husband because... because... Oh, fine, we're stuck again. <laughs> All right, Phil. <laughs> This is embarrassing. Hold it, Phil. All right, boys, some more pages. Here you are, Speedy. Thanks. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, yes. Now, listen, Mrs. Smith. You murdered your husband because there's another man in the case. Now, tell me, who's your lover? Who is he? Well, what's going on here? Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Uh-huh, the other man. What's your name? My card, sir. Hmm. 
Dr. Philo Q. Harrison. What's the Q for? Quack, what else? <laughs> now listen, Harrison, I don't think you're a doctor at all. Where did you study medicine? Madison, Madison Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> I thought so. Now come clean, you. You're this woman's sweetheart, aren't you? Why, that's ridiculous. Preposterous. Incredible. Fatiphone. Foodafin. Rosafran. Now cut that out. <laughs> You two are responsible for the murder of J. Malcolm Smith. And you're under arrest. You can't arrest us. You can't prove that we did it. Oh, yes, I can. I know your motive. You killed Mr. Smith because... Oh, nuts. Ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting for the finish of this thrilling murder mystery, why don't you run down to your neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O? And if you would like a copy of Jell-O's wonderful new calendar of dessert recipe book, just send a dime, 10 cents, to Don Wilson, Battle Creek, Michigan, and be sure to do it today. Hey, fellas, we're stuck again. Here you are, Sugarfoot. <laughs> All right, let's finish this. I know your motive, Dr. Harrison. You killed Mr. Smith because you're in love with his wife. That's the truth now, isn't it? No, no, I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. Oh, yes, you did. You're guilty of murder, Harrison, murder. And you're gonna hang for it. All right. I'll confess. I did it. I killed him. I killed him because I hated him. And I'm glad he's dead, you understand? Glad! Glad! Not bad, eh? I ought to get the Academy Award for this. You'll hang for it. <laughs> Come on, you two. Slap the handcuffs on him, Sarge. I didn't bring him with me. Oh, well, never mind. It ain't believable anyhow. <laughs> Play, Doc. If you haven't yet sent for your copy of that brand new recipe book, The Calendar of Desserts, do so real soon. It's a beautiful looking book that you'll find a pleasure to own, and let me show you how downright convenient it is to use. Suppose, for example, that you're trying to think of an idea for tomorrow night's dessert. With this new recipe book, you'd simply open it to the page that contains dessert suggestions for January. And there, on the January 13th, you'd read about a delightful jello treat called Raspberry Charlotte combination of luscious raspberry jam and rich crimson raspberry jello. That's all there is to it. You simply name the date and this clever book suggests the dessert. There are 365 dessert ideas in this swell book, a different one for every day in the year, including all kinds of pastries, puddings, cakes, and cookies, and many, many desserts made with bright, shimmering jello. So send for your copy now. Mail 10 cents just 10 cents in coin or stamps to Don Wilson, care of General Foods, Battle Creek, Michigan. Do it tonight. The last number of the 15th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, boys, this play turned out all right, but next week, will you please try and have the program ready before we go on the air? Okay. Hello, Ma. <laughs> well, what can I do? Good night, folks.